I've been commissioned to make a moth poncho. Yes, I make ponchos, just normal, normal ponchos with the hood and the little pocket and they're cozy and flowy and awesome. And my friend reached out and said, hey, can you make this look like a moth? Because that would be really rad. And I said, heck yeah. Yeah, I can, I can do that. I don't know if I can do that, but we're gonna find out. <laughs> so that's what we're doing today. And however long it takes me to do this, we're starting it today and We'll see how it goes. So I'm taking you along with me and we're just gonna jump right in and, and wing it. I have an idea, I have like a, a little plan. I'll show you my plan. I sketched out a rough idea and then we're just gonna do it. And it should work out, right? That's how everything works out. You just kind of do it and, and it's it's always great. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, well, come, come along, come along with me. We're gonna... We're gonna sew a moth poncho. So here is my plan. This is like the overhead view of like if you spread it out and laid it on the ground, what it should look like. And then uh, we're gonna have little antennae, hopefully on the hood. And then this guy is like, as if you were wearing it and you had your wings spread, that's kind of the look that I would like it to have. Here's the fabric that I'm gonna use. They're all flannel. I did pre-wash them, and that's why there's a lot of fuzz and lint on the black, but I'll make sure to take care of that. Um, basically, the request was for purples and teals, and I'm gonna add some black in there. I was originally gonna line it with black, but then I found this, and I thought, oh my god, that's perfect, because we've got purple and teal blue little mothy boys on there. So I figured, why not have a fun little lining? And if I can, I'll make it reversible. So to start out, I folded my fabric into four layers and then I also folded my design into fourths. That way I only have to draw out one pattern and then I can copy that for the rest of the wings. So I used a coordinate method. Since my drawing was to scale, I was able to measure out exactly where the coordinates should be. That way I can map it out based on my design. I then cut out the neck hole. I used the neck hole template from my original poncho design to get the right shape. And then I clipped all my layers together so that nothing would scooch around. I then start connecting the dots and using my intuition and eyeball kind of what I would like the wings to look like. I'll have a bigger wing on the outer part where your arm would be and then in the center will be a smaller wing. So using the coordinate dots that I made scaling up my original design, I connected those and got this nice wing shape. Now that I've got the overall shape that I want the poncho to be, I'm going to need to make a paper pattern so I can draw out the rest of the smaller details. So the way that I do this is I take paper grocery bags, I open them up and tape them together. It's a free way to get a nice big piece of paper and I don't recommend using masking tape. Definitely use uh, like a packing tape or something. Uh, over time the masking tape peeled up off of the paper and it became a bit of a struggle later on down the line. So take my advice and if you're going to do this, just use uh, packing tape instead of masking tape. So once I had a big enough piece of paper, I clipped that to my fabric. And since I had already mapped out the general shape that I wanted on my fabric, instead of redoing all of the math and mapping it out, I just folded my paper to match the curves of the wings. And then once I have the curve folded into my paper, I go in with a Sharpie and then I'm able to draw that line on so I know exactly where to cut. So now I am 
planning out the rest of the design onto my pattern. So for this, I'm starting with chalk because I knew roughly where I wanted it and then once I got it exactly where I wanted it, then I would go back with a Sharpie. That way I don't have a bunch of Sharpie marks on my pattern that aren't actually going to be in the finished result. So I used my chalk and then you'll see here in a minute once I got it where I liked it, I'm just going over them with the Sharpie. And to get this design, I, since my drawing was to scale, I used the coordinate method in addition to just eyeballing it to make sure it looked right once it was scaled up. And then for details like this outer edge, I knew I wanted it to be about an inch of a strip of fabric cut out in the end. So I just went ahead and measured directly from the edge uh, about an inch. That way I could just kind of sketch it directly on. So next, I want to add stitches down the middle of the wing for additional design. So I thought I could just get away with folding it and those lines would be nice and even and beautiful. Well, that was a great idea in theory. However, once I found circles to trace for the circle design, I realized I didn't have enough space the way it was folded. So I'm just kind of eyeballing what I think would look good. And once I've got the lines exactly how I like them, then I trace them with the Sharpie. So there was no real rhyme or reason to this. I just used my intuition and made it look good. <laughs> so it's a bit confusing because now there's a bunch of folds in my paper, but that's where the Sharpie comes in. Once you've got your spot that you like, uh, trace it with the Sharpie and then you know that's the one that you're, you're gonna follow once you're cutting out your pieces. So again, we're back to eyeballing. I laid down my circles and I said, that looks great and just traced them out. And so now I've got the circles in there and moving on to the smaller wing. This I just kind of measured off of the bigger wing and just kind of mapped out what I thought looked good. So I don't really have a, a rhyme or reason to this part, but it's I'll just let you watch what I'm doing because it's a little bit easier than me trying to babble and explain to you what I did. And you'll notice in my original design that I had a single circle on the smaller wing. Well, as I was mapping it out in full scale, I thought that might not look the most aesthetically pleasing in the final result. So I decided to just do three circles to mimic the same circles that I've got on the bigger wing. And I first did them in chalk, looked in a mirror, thought it looked nice. So I went ahead and traced that with a Sharpie. And then now I'm adding the detail in the edge of the wing. That I was able to just fold it and get a nice even space. And since I didn't have any circles to stick in between the folds, uh, just using a nice even space with this fold technique worked out really well. So I did that for the smaller wing as well. And then once I had the lines there from the folds, I traced them with Sharpie. And now I've got a full complete quarter pattern of this wing design. So now that I've completed that, I need to make a copy of it because I need one that I can keep whole and I need one that I can cut apart and make patterns of all my little pieces that I need. So I taped together bags, I traced the outline, and then the way that I went about copying this pattern since I needed to cut one apart anyway, I started cutting off pieces and then I traced where that piece was. So as you can see here, I'm cutting this piece off and then I'll go in with a Sharpie and then just trace where it was. That way, when I'm done cutting apart the original pattern piece, 
I'll be left with one cut up into all the pieces that I need and then the one that I traced will be a full complete copy of the original design. Once I've got the big wing completed, I moved on to the small wing part and did the same exact thing. I cut off a piece, set that to the side, traced it, and then cut off the rest of the pieces and completed it until I had a full piece. And then for the small pieces, I went through and taped them up. That way they're a little bit stronger for when I go to actually use them as pattern pieces. They won't just get ripped and messed up. So as you can see here, I've got a big wing that is my full design and then I'm just replacing all the pieces that I cut up and taped just to make sure I've got everything that I need and it all lines up as it should. So now that I've got my wing pattern pieces complete, I'm moving on to the hood. So. I knew I wanted the hood to be oversized, so I just took my original poncho hood design and copied it, but when I traced it, I just added a few inches to make it bigger. And then I added this squiggly detail in the front, and then I added this in the back to kind of give an accent piece. I ended up hating it, so I, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to that after, but um, basically what I, you see here is I cut out another piece, cause I'll need a whole piece, and then just like the wing, I'm going to need one that is cut up as well. So I cut off the squiggly bit in the front, and I cut off this accent piece in the back that I ended up just taping right back on, because as I was trying to do a mock-up, I hated that. So we're just going to omit that weird little slice in the back completely and pretend it never happened. So the slice was ugly, so we're taping it back on, ignoring that it happened. And then uh, the squiggly detail in the front, you can see on the left there, that's my mock-up piece. I liked that. I liked the way that looked. So uh, we're going to, we're rolling with that. And then since I taped that piece on, I'm just matching it up to the big one, the original, not the big one, but the... Uh, <laughs> The full pattern piece. I'm matching it up to make sure everything lines up. And then you can see me writing details here. Uh, anytime I make a pattern and I need to remember something, uh, like for example, I'm going to be overlapping those two dotted line sections, so I need to make sure I cut extra fabric seam allowance for that. So, made my notes, and then we're moving on to the inner lining pattern piece. So you see me taping together my bags again. I taped together four whole bags because I need to do a full wing instead of the quarter wing that I was working with. I'm now doing a full wing. That way I can just cut out one big piece. Once I measured my lining fabric that I got, I realized I was about a probably about a quarter to a half of a yard short to just cut one big piece, right? So I was just gonna, you know, go to the fabric store, get more fabric. Well, I, you're watching me now about four months into the project. I worked on it a little bit here and there over the last few months and they no longer have that lining moth fabric in store. So I'm improvising. I've got black, so what I'm going to do is splice little triangles of black in between triangles of the moth fabric. This will make more sense once you actually see how it comes together uh, with the actual fabric pieces, but basically the way I'm attacking this, after a lot of thought, I want the majority to be the moth and these little slivers to be the black. 
So I measured the center and then two inches out. So it was about four inches wide at the bottom and I tapered them all up to the top. <laughs> so I'm using my fold technique to get the center of the wing on this side. And then once I've got my center mark, I'll measure four inches across, so two on either side, and then just connect a straight line. And then to make it look a little bit softer and more intentional, I'm sloping the corners so that it's not just a harsh cutoff. It'll kind of uh, blend like wings should. <laughs> so this was a bit of an improv Im improvision to my original design, I was hoping I could just use just a full, nice one solid piece of lining fabric, but uh, it got a lot complicated, a lot more complicated than that, but it's fine. It turned out really cool in the end. So I'm excited to show you the end, but here we are doing the pattern. Now, before I cut all my pieces apart, I'm labeling them. I'm so glad you can see I cut a little bit. I caught myself and said, I need to label these, otherwise I'll cut them out and have no idea what goes where. So I wrote what they were and I gave them a number and this saved my entire project in the end. So if you ever have a complicated pattern, give it a number or some sort of system so you know what's what. So once everything is numbered, I'm now cutting them all apart because the skinny boys will be black and then the big old pieces will be the moth fabric. And to strengthen the tips of these skinny little pieces, I am taping them. And as you can see, as I warned you not to use masking tape, I have switched over to packing tape and it has been fabulous and worked way better than the masking tape ever did. So get some packing tape, tape the tiny pieces, of your patterns and you will be good as gold. So because this has grown to be quite a big project, I've decided to break it up into a series. So this completes the first video in the Moth Poncho series where I create my pattern and cut out my pattern pieces. In the next one, I will be cutting out the fabric using this pattern and assembling it as well. So uh, stay tuned those videos will come out very shortly after this one and then in the end I will compile them all into one big video if you're more interested in watching like a two hour long video otherwise we've got these little episodes of this whole big old moth poncho project so thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one